Another reason why narcissistic people yell out, I want a divorce. Let's say me, I'm gonna keep it straight on Leon, right? At 11 years old, I've really realized and figured out that, that I didn't wanna be married, didn't wanna have kids. Because my parents divorced, because we lost our house, we didn't have utilities, water, food, money. And I was like, yeah, where's my father? I know he was gone. He was removed from the house, gone across town, right? And so I didn't wanna be married. And so I blocked it out for years. I didn't, I didn't get married to my early 30s, late th early 30s. And so when I did get married, I wasn't ready to be a, a husband. I wasn't ready to be a father. I was never groomed to be a groom, right? So I can't blame anybody, my uncles, my brother, my father, nobody but myself. I had great examples in my family. I had men that had been married for a long time. My grandfather, my uncle. And so narcissistic men, for me, I come from a broken, dysfunctional home from age 11 on. Uh, my, my dad did a great job with me. My mother did a great job with me. But, with me. but when the divorce hit, I was done, right? I was in the streets on my own for a very long time. And then I joined the military and became even more dysfunctional, uh, even more narcissistic, even more self-centered, even more self-serving, even, even more egotistical. So you have to consider where a narcissistic person comes from their childhood, as far as marriage, as far as matrimony, as far as being spiritual, as far as being broken, as far as having morals, character and integrity, as far as wanting to be married or not, knowing how to be a husband, knowing how to be a fiance, knowing how not to cheat, knowing how not to lie. I didn't have any of those capabilities. I knew how to do everything wrong, everything bad. And that's what resonated with me. Marriage was a secondary, if not third, right? It wasn't important to me. You know, having a home wasn't important to me because I come from a house and the house was empty, no utilities, no phone, no water, no food, struggle, right? Um, so that's where I come from. You have to consider where that person comes from that you are married to or where that come, person comes from that you are marrying. Do you know anything about his mother, his father, or her mother, her father, or grandparents? There's a lot of dysfunction passed down. But a narcissistic person would tell you, I don't want to be married no more. I don't like being married. I want out. Knowing that it's going to hurt you and it's going to paralyze you, it's going to stop you. Right. They know that once you do this, this is what you say. And then this is what they hope you say. OK, Leon, I'll stop. Meaning you'll stop talking to me about making the marriage, marriage better. You'll stop getting on to me. You'll stop asking me questions. What I want you to do is shut down. Stop. Be quiet. Leave me alone. Shut up. Don't talk about the issues. Don't talk about the marriage. Don't talk about us being on the rocks. Don't talk about what you want to do to make things better. I'm not about making things better. I'm okay with us being where we are right now. So let's just keep it going that way. It's dysfunction. I'm, that's my norm. Dysfunction is my norm. It's not your norm, but you're trying to make me come out of that. And I don't know how to come out of that. So when they say I want a divorce, they're doing it to make you give up and quit and become somebody that you're not used to being, which is somebody that's that has character, morals, and and knows how to be a good wife. Or if it's a man that's dealing with a woman like me, knows how to be a good husband and fiance. When they say they want a divorce, they're trying to put you on ice, to chill you out, to make you stop bringing up things that they don't want to talk about. And the moment you go, okay, I won't bring it up again. Okay, and you all start to apologize for me doing wrong to you. Okay, Leon, I'm sorry I pissed you off. I'm sorry I brought it up again. I'm sorry I made you mad. And so you start to lose yourself each day, each week, each month, each year. And you know, you notice after a while, you're living in a, you're in a house, the house that I built, as far as emotions, as far as character. It's not a home. There's no harmony. There's no peace and there's no love because this is what I want. This is what I built. This is my norm. And so now you just gave up and now you are submitting to what I want you to do, which is be, you know, or act like a little boy that I once was. And now you have the childhood that I have, and I'm comfortable with that. So you struggle because you know what? It's embarrassing for you to, and you won't, you won't say anything to me about it. You don't bring it up. You quit. Okay, Leon, I'm tapping out. I won't say anything. But it's embarrassing to you to get a divorce. It's embarrassing to talk to your mother, your brother, your father, your uncle, your sisters, your friends about us not having a healthy relationship. It's embarrassing to you to admit to your friends that we're struggling. It's embarrassing to you to admit to your friends that, Leon asked me for a divorce. And so what do you do? You give yourself the silent treatment. It's all based on what I want. So never lose yourself in a relationship, ever. When a person says they want a divorce, they don't really want that. They just want you to shut up and lose your identity.
Because once you start being quiet and losing your identity, they won't even talk about getting divorced anymore. Because you just tapped out. And that's not being submissive. That's being a subtraction. Oh, you have a great day.